to help him recruit a bunch of little girls and have a little cult of little John Bonet Ramsey lookalikes. And there was some kind of bizarre behavior between between him and Samantha Spiegel. So she went and got a restraining order against him, which is how her name became public. So I was aware of this restraining order, and I was aware of the name Samantha Spiegel. So I contacted her for an interview, and she agrees to come on the show. And she was, a, you know, I, I kind of got a vibe off her. <laughs> I kind of got a vibe off her that, hey, you know, this is someone. I got her here now. <laughs> I got her wrangled in here right now this minute. Let's do this. Let's tape this interview right now. She says, you want to do it right now? She goes, yeah, I'll do it right now. So I get her on the phone. We start taping. Right. And you can find the show in our member section at operareport.com. And she explains to me about how when she was went to this school, this Catholic school, like a middle school, a grammar school, John Mark Carr was her was an assistant teacher at that school. So when she saw Carr in the press about uh, John Benet Ramsey, she contacted him in order, to, and she got into a relationship with him. Then he started stalking her and harassing her, threatening her. She got scared. She got a restraining order against him. Her story went public. Okay, because it was public record when you got a restraining order against somebody against a name like John Mark Carr. During the interview, she blurts out that she had an affair with Keith Ablo, Dr. Keith Ablo, who was a Fox News contributor at the time. And I say to her in the interview, I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> wait a second. And she made some allegations against him as well. And I says, well, wait a minute. Have you ever said this on the air before? She goes, no, I'm breaking it here on your show here live. <laughs> and I said, okay, wait, 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 wait. I said, let's look into this, okay? Because she was like 19 years old at the time, and he was far older and married and in a position of, you know, the medical, you know, all kind of stuff. This guy's a physician, a therapist. So <laughs> we bleeped it out of that interview. And I talked to her off the air, and she confides in me that she entered it, that she she went to Fox News, interviewed her, and then she contacted Keith Ablo, and he got back to her, and she thought that Keith Ablo was going to counsel her and <laughs> give her therapy for the trauma she'd been through with John Mark Carr. But rather than that, uh, they entered into this. S&M relationship where he was, uh, you know, her dominant and she was his submissive slave uh, with all kinds of bizarre stuff. And I, I, I've seen all the material and I'm not going to. OK, let me tell you my position, my role in all this. I contacted her as a reporter, radio host. She blaps this uh, information down in my lap. And then I tell her, I says, well, listen, maybe, you know, we can. uh get you some uh, compensation for the damages that have been done to you here. Let, let's discuss this off the air. For now, we'll bleep his name out. So she describes to me all kinds of stuff. One of the things she... Uh, so, nothing I'm telling you, by the way, is attorney-client privilege, client privilege, or any stuff, that, any information that I know from my personal first-hand communications uh, with her as her private investigator. This all comes from, uh, that's all out in the, the public, okay? There's public lawsuits now. There's all kinds of stuff now. It is all out now. I can talk about it now. I, I haven't talked to you previous to this because it, it's open private, <laughs> okay? But now it's all out. Okay, so we start talking, and she tells me about all these uh, serious allegations of abuse that she went through, that she laid out to me. Including one was where uh, uh, they were in this S and M relationship. They got into an argument when she was in California and he was in Boston, Massachusetts, and he had her committed to a mental institution. And then when she exited that mental institution, psychiatric institution, uh, they resumed their sexual relationship. Okay, this is what she alleges to me. So I thought this was a great lawsuit. But she was hesitant to move forward with it. So time goes by, time goes by, time goes by, and I'm trying to convince her. You know, I even uh, made some other efforts. 
and it's even overlapped into another investigation that I was conducting in the same area where she lived and some other things came up. She was also involved in a pen pal relationship with the, who's that guy? Polly Class, the guy who murdered Polly Class. So there's a lot of stuff there. Okay, and then there was also, too, all kinds of uh, sexual abuse in her childhood and her sister and her family, you know, and all kinds of horrible stuff. I mean, a lot of it we talked about in the interview, that her mother was a prostitute. There's adoption going on and stuff like that. Uh, tragic situation, you know, and, and she went to this Dr. Keith Ablo for help, and instead she wound up his sex life. So... Ultimately, after our discussions, she agrees that it's in her best interest to pursue a lawsuit against Keith Abel. I presented this to several attorneys, okay, and we landed on one, <laughs> okay. Because, by the way, too, while all this is going on, I tried to bring it to one attorney, but he was involved with all it on TV with the uh, Stormy Daniels and stuff. <laughs> He's all up to his neck, you know, a 24-hour Robert Mueller investigation, you know. This is what goes on behind the scenes right now. I don't know what you guys are doing. I don't know what the flippity-flop on YouTube is uh, doing when he's not on this flippity-flop YouTube channel, but this is what I'm doing, okay? So come up with this other attorney who was also involved in another big high-profile case I was involved in, too, that you all are aware of. Uh... And, okay, we all come to an arrangement. And then, well, okay, we need to bring in another law firm on the other end of the country because that's where Ablo is uh, headquartered. And as soon as the other attorney comes in, right away, uh, that, that happen. we got to get rid of him. <laughs> we got to get rid of this guy. He's no good. He's no good. So they turn my client against me, and in turn, the whole case falls apart. Okay, the whole case fell, fell apart there. Um, but you know, our case fell apart, the case that I put together. But turns out that there were two witnesses who had similar incidents happen to them in this by Ablo uh, that I had located and put together. And nah, I didn't really put it together. I just looked at them as witnesses. They found their own attorneys is what happened. And um, so they had their own case and their own team. But they won their case. They won their case. They brought it before the uh, Board of Psychiatric Examiners, and uh, they settled their lawsuit, and they all, they all came out of this phantom and happy, man. Our case fell apart. Why? Because they had to, everyone got greedy. They had to get rid of that offer. But that's another little behind-the-scenes situation for you over here. That's the kind of stuff I'm involved in, you know, all the time. Uh if you think you have a case like that, you know, it's worth any money, get a hold of me, man. I'll, I'll put it together for you. Bring in the right team. We got the right team now, that's for sure, man. Uh, we're taking names and uh, kicking butt. Or just go directly to kmdlaw.com on the website there. But if you want to talk to me first and I put the case together for you, present it for the you know, uh, case summary, uh, we'll do that. Oh, boy. Well, you know, I'm trying to keep it light. In the midst of all this stuff, one thing I'd like to uh, bring up is that a lot of people are, are circulating this uh, audio recording and forwarding it to me about how um, some woman on an island with a English accent is talking about how this head doctor t says you know they found the cure in China for the COVID nineteen and you got to wash your hands and sip warm water, and wash your clothes and watch you know. I agree with all that. By the way, don't keep sending me that because I'm going to have it a hundred times over. Everybody sends me everything. Trust me. There's no shortage of people sending me stuff. And it's all common sense, you know. Yeah, wash your hands. Wash your clothes. Wash your sheets. When you come in from outside, don't sit down on your furniture. You know, wash your clothes. You know, use that sanitizer when you go to a store. Use that stuff. Stay six feet away from people. What's wrong with that? I just canceled a meeting just now in person. Nothing wrong with that, man. Let's get through this. You know, uh, there's many, many cases all over the place here. Florida, Nevada, New York seems to be really, really uh, a lot of cases. Louisiana seems to have a lot of cases right now. New Orleans. So let's just all be smart and calm, you know. 
Uh, there's a lot to be concerned about with this, you know, like I was saying last week. And I almost didn't air that show last week. I did one previous uh, new content show before this one, and I called it uh, Evening the Scores. When I tell the story about Mike uh, Blutrich and uh, the Scores uh, case. A little behind the scenes info on that case. And I talk about, you know, uh, what I see as uh, opportunists, you know, taking advantage of this virus, this pandemic to, you know, enrich themselves and, and, uh, and uh, solidify their power and control. And one good example of that is the Bill Barr's Department of Justice putting out an indictment on the legally elected president of Venezuela, Maduro, and his top people over there, alleging drug smuggling. Insult to injury. Take a look at Bill Barr's uh, connection to the Tamina, Arkansas, and Iran-Contra. It's up to his neck in that stuff, according to people that were there. And he's going to indict someone else for drug smuggling? That's a good one. <laughs> I, wish I, you know, I wish I could indict my uh, competing radio hosts <laughs> for, you know, for doing radio shows. So anyway, Bill Barr comes out with this press conference this week. I couldn't even watch it. But he's talking about the suspending habeas corpus. <sighs> you you, know, you got to understand how important this is, guys. This is your right to appear before a judge before you're uh, placed into custody. Your arraignment, you know, produce the corpse, you know, you know, you know, when you go in to plead not guilty, guilty, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and you look at this, you know, and you say, well, okay, you know, all well, these people are criminals, they committed a crime, police arrested, but so many, of the, and even now you can watch this TV show, Live PD, and you can see that so many of these cases of police arrest are like, well, the cop was disrespected or they lied to the cop, you know. Or the cop gets the cops bullying somebody gets them into an argument with them, and the old expression was, "Well, you're not going to win the argument. Uh, you may win in court, but you're going to have to take the ride." Okay. Meaning that you know the cop can bust your chops, you know, and you bust his chops back. He can put the cuffs on you and take you down to the jail for the night. The DA will throw the case out the next day, but you had to go for that ride. You had to spend the night in court. Okay. And this goes on more than you could imagine. All right, you got you know I've sat through thousands of arraignments down there at the court, uh, you know, back in New York and back in Nevada, and half the cases get thrown out the next day because the DA declines to prosecute because basically it was a, a a pissing match between a cop and a, and a kid usually, by the way, okay, or a drunk <laughs> or both, right? So now you know. So just uh, thank you. And now this. Uh, Increase in police powers means that any kind of argument you have with a cop right now is going to be worse than just a ride. It's going to be, you're not going to be able to see a judge. You're going to be sitting there in jail until uh, they say. Okay. So now, will that make the cop nicer to you? <laughs> or will that mean he's going to be more bullying to you and more obstinate and more uh, rude and obnoxious and arrogant? I haven't experienced any problems with the cops down here in Florida. You know, um, my experience with the cops back in Nevada was not positive. You know, I, I did not did not have a positive experience. I never met a cop in, in Nevada that was not rude. You know, and then we had many, many police uh, deaths of unarmed uh, civilians. We had my case over there, the um, uh, the Byron Williams case that I put together. We have right now against the Las Vegas Metro Police Department. Uh, but so far here, the police I've met here have been very kind and polite. I got to tell you, too, growing up on Staten Island, man, I got along with a lot of cops, you know. They knew what I was up to. I knew what they were up to. We had no problems. You know, it was like a sort of a professional, uh, <laughs> a professional, uh, you know, uh, friendship there, you know. So, but here in, uh, let's see what's what's going to happen here in Florida, see how this works out. I guess we'll find out, right, when martial law comes down. The other thing, too, is uh, Barr is talking about is, um, <sighs> you know, I almost had a guest on this week about the new cash bail reform. And then uh, then they came back to me and said, hey, we also want to talk about coronavirus and the jail system. So I assumed he was in favor of uh, removing cash bail, but then I found out the guy was a bail bondsman. <laughs> okay? So he, he wants to continue the bail process. And basically what the bail process is, you take people and, you know, you want to 
ensure, you want to guarantee that they're going to you arrest them. They have a minor crime. Could be minor. Paperwork crime. You know, driving.